my channel. I am Neha Parashar, working in a healthcare company and based in Germany. In last video, we saw what the orphan drugs are and what are the criteria for their classification and what is the worldwide status of laws or regulations related to orphan drugs. What are the benefits or incentive provided to orphan drug worldwide? That also we discussed in last video. In today's video, we will see what are the laws or regulations related to orphan drugs in EU. What are the regulatory bodies involved for orphan drugs in EU? What are the criteria for classification of orphan drugs in EU? What are the steps to receive orphan drug designation? And what to do once you receive this orphan drug designation? So let's start one by one. First, what are the laws or regulations related to orphan drugs in EU? Do you know that? So this is the first regulation which describes what is the procedure for orphan drug designation in EU and what are the incentives for the development of orphan drugs in EU. Okay, do you remember I mentioned in previous video that in EU this term orphan drug designation that is ODD is called as orphan medicinal product designation that is OMPD. So whenever in my video I'm using this word ODD interchangeably, you can understand it means I'm referring to the same thing. Okay. So now coming to the second regulation, this is more general regulation which actually describes the centralized procedure in EU because all the marketing authorization for orphan drugs need to follow the centralized procedure in EU. It's under mandatory scope of centralized procedure. Okay, therefore this regulation for centralized procedure also becomes applicable for orphan drugs. I hope you remember what is the mandatory scope of centralized procedure and we talked about this in very detail in my previous video series. So you can check that video if you are not aware. Now the second question comes, what are the regulatory bodies involved for orphan drugs in EU? Do you know that? EMA has a separate committee for orphan drugs which is called Committee for Orphan Medicinal Product COMP. This committee evaluates the application related to orphan drugs. After the evaluation by COMP, EMA signed this review comments to EC which is European Commission which makes the final decision if the designation is to be granted or not. Now the third question comes what is the criteria for classification for orphan drugs in EU? How we will decide if we should apply for orphan drug designation or not? For that the disease should be serious or life threatening disease. Prevalence of condition in EU must be equal to or less than 5 in 10,000 people in EU. Financial viability of that drug should be less, meaning the development and manufacturing cost for a drug is too high for such disease that it's difficult for pharmaceutical companies to recover that money from the sales of that drug. right? And the other criteria is that there is no satisfactory treatment available for that disease. And if the satisfactory treatment is available, then your drug provides significant benefit as compared to the previous treatment. Once you know what are the criteria for orphan drug designation in EU are, you can apply for this designation in any stage in the development of a product prior to a marketing authorization application. So what are the steps and how to apply for this orphan drug designation? Let's see that. So these are the steps to gain ODD in EU. First is pre-submission meeting. Then you submit the ODD application. Then COMP review and evaluate your application. After the review, COMP gives opinion to EC. In the end, EC gives the final approval. Let's see each of these steps one by one. First step is pre-submission meeting. The EMA strongly recommends having a pre-submission meetings before your application. Pre-submission meetings can be a face-to-face -face meetings or a teleconference. These meetings takes place at least two months prior to your submission date. So whenever you are planning your ODD application submission, the meetings takes place at least two months before the submission date. Okay. I would also personally recommend holding a pre-submission meeting with EMA wherever possible. 
because post covid many meetings are now held by a teleconference why not to take advantage of this opportunity as it will increase your success rate right also the meetings are free of charge for orphan designation so better make use of these opportunities to have a discussion with health authority in advance for these meetings at least one week prior to meetings upload all relevant information to iris portal now you must be thinking what is this iris portal neha you are bringing this new concept in this eu designation cycle this is an online portal from ema this is kind of a gateway where you can upload and submit all your information which will directly be received by health authority right so this is a kind of a gateway for the submission now the question is what do you upload or what do you include in the pre submission meeting package right we include draft submission sections short powerpoint presentation about the application it should be not more than 15 minutes so around 15 minutes of presentation then list of all the participants all this we include in the meeting package ema will not do any assessment and will not give any decision that yes we will most likely give you this designation or not that's not the purpose of these pre submission meetings right so they will not give any of such kind of assessment but they will only focus on procedural related questions for example they will have a look into the draft submission data and scientific documents that we have provided to them before the meeting and based on that they will discuss any questions related to orphan designation process condition scope of the application and so on they will also discuss if the prevalence calculation that we have done looks acceptable to them right also whatever significant benefits you are claiming about your drug over the other available drugs or treatment in the market right then you can discuss that also in these pre submission meetings now after the meeting we as a sponsor provides meeting minutes to ema one week after do the meeting or after the call ema reviews and post final version of these meeting minutes after one week okay so this was all about the pre submission meetings for odd application so now let's jump to the second step of the process that is application phase so after the pre submission meeting now it's time to submit our odd application in 2018 ema made it mandatory to use iris portal to apply for an orphan drug designation or amendment or submit any annual report also earlier before submitting the application you had to submit notification of intention to ema which is no longer required now so that notification of intention for orphan drug designation application is no more a requirement there is a calendar as you can see in this snapshot from ema website which give you the time table by which dates you can submit your application and based on these dates how much time it will take for comp opinion right and what all is part of your application the application looks like this it has all these information on section cover letter then the scientific section then we also have to submit a proof that a sponsor has a presence or establishment in eu if there is any other person or company is acting on behalf of us that means on behalf of sponsor in eu then we need to submit the letter of authorization for this as well then product name proposed orphan indication which has to be translated in official eu languages plus icelandic and norwegian language as well then the literature references so all of this makes the part of the application so this is how the template for scientific information that is the core dossier for odd application looks like it includes all this information as you can see in this figure all this information is required for the ema to assess everything about your drug okay you can download the template from ema website as i have highlighted in this snap from ema website so you can download these templates from ema website as they are these are available here so you can click on the links that i have highlighted here and you will see this template so now you submit your application as per the deadline via iris portal these are the next steps which happens in background as you can see in this figure ema appoints rapporteur 
for those who are not aware about what is Reputer, I have talked about this in past videos. The link for all the past videos is given in the description box below. So you can check out those videos. So after this, the application is validated. If there are any other questions, Ema will come back to us and ask those questions. If not, validation phase stops. Okay. The entire validation phase takes 60 days once it's completed. Ema sends us the evaluation procedure timeline. After this, the evaluation or review phase starts, which is the third step in the process. The EMA scientific officers with the COMP reporter starts the review. They will prepare a summary report on this application and circulate it to all the COMP members. After this, COMP members will do a meeting to discuss the application together. And if there are any further questions, they will send the list of questions to us with a draft summary report within three working days. If no question, then COMP provide their opinion to EC within 90 days after their first meeting. After this, COMP provides their opinion to EC within 90 days after their first meeting. COMP opinion can be positive or can be negative. If COMP opinion is negative, sponsor or we can appeal within 15 days based on the comp opinion ec will make the final decision within 30 days after the comp opinion after the decision ema publishes information under orphan drug designation on their website and ec maintains the list of all orphan designations on their website which is called as orphan medicinal product register omp register both sites contain the list of the designation and you can search them by drug name you can check this register to see the information from another applicant for example if you are going to apply for the disease for which some other applicants has also applied you can find lots of information already there for example what is the prevalence of the disease in various countries and other related information you can also see what comp assessment was on that applicant's application and how they got approval all this information you can check out in this register so now, once you got the ODD, what next? What to do after that? What are the next steps? Suppose you got the ODD today, but you will submit your MA application after three years. What happens within those three years? Meanwhile, we need to make sure that we submit an annual report to track the progress because there can be the case that you receive orphan drug designation today, but after one year, that disease is no more a rare disease because maybe now the prevalence of that disease is changed or maybe someone else has developed a drug for that disease, right? So your designation will not be any more valid in that case. What? Yes, that's true. That can happen. That's why we need to keep proving that the orphan status is still valid for our drug as we will still meet the designation criteria in EU. And for this, we need to submit annual report each year, including relevant data until we submit our MA application. So throughout those years, we have to make sure that we are tracking the progress on this orphan designation status. So this was all about ODD, which is called OM. PD in EU. But before we end this video, do you know what is the regulation applicable to US for orphan drug designation and what is the procedure to get orphan drug designation in US? If you know the answer, then let me know in the comment section. If not, then don't worry. We'll talk about that in the next upcoming video. Till then, let's stay tuned.